Hello everyone, I am Tirupati Rao Ghanta, Officer Trainer of Indian Revenue Services IT. Today, I am going to talk about some of the nuances of Union Public Service Commission Civil Service Examination Personality Test, which is also popularly known as Interview. Interview in UPSC Civil Service Examination carries a significant weightage, which is of, of, of 275 marks, which is slightly more than any GS paper. If you observe, it is very difficult to score 20 to 30 marks more than average candidate in GS paper. For example, highest score in any of the any four of the GS papers could be up to 130 or 150. But of the 275 marks, one can easily score 2, 210 or 205 or 190 plus are 60 to 70 more marks than the average candidate in the UPSC interview. So today I will talk about the approach required or the understanding is required or the what kind of preparation is required for UPSC interview to get more 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 marks. Uh, if you go through the most of the marks scored by the candidates who are selected or who are not selected interview is the final step which will make or break your selection or to decide the deserved service or the desired cadre so uh, don't ignore the interview process please follow certain approach required for the interview which i am going to talk about in the next 40 to 45 minutes session which will help i think it will help you to uh, score more marks in the interview process uh, generally what people think that they don't understand what is upsc personality test and what is interview generally interview is not or the personality test is not test of your knowledge which is clearly mentioned in the upsc notification if you go through the upsc notification they clearly mention that it is not the technique of the cross examination or cross questioning or test of your knowledge your knowledge has been already tested in your prelims, already been tested in seven papers of mains examination. That's why you are going to appear for the UPSC interview. So, what it is actually is also explained in the notification, which is also we can also consider it as a official syllabus for the UPSC personality test. UPSC personality test. Understand the word personality. Personality is not a trait which you can acquire in a day or two or which you can acquire in short span of time or uh, the personality test preparation cannot be done after in this process of UPSC cycle preparation like one, one, one candidate will think that I will start mains preparation after my, uh, after my prelims is over or I will start my interview preparation after my mains is over that cannot be worked out here in the interview process if you go through the syllabus it is mentioned that the candidate will be asked questions on matter of general interest. Understand the keyword general interest. That means he is not asking the specific knowledge or the specialized knowledge. General interest. If you understand this keyword, because UPSC for UPSC people from different kinds, uh, different fields, different. Uh, people with different graduation subjects people with different kinds of work experience people with different socio-economic background people with different uh, other professional experiences they appear but despite of the diversity they are testing the general interest here general interest means so what kind of qualities from your background are best suitable to start a career in civil service that's what they are going to test they also mentioned that yeah they also mentioned that the objective of the personality test is to assess the personal suitability as i said a little earlier it is to test your personal suitability to start a successful career or a great to become a great civil servant that is what they wanted to check that is the main objective of the interview process again i'm telling understand it is not the test of knowledge similarly they also mentioned that It is of natural through directed and purposive conversation. It is to generate a purpose and meaningful conversation with the board members. It is not a strict cross questioning or the strict cross examination or the question and answers like 
generally people do in viva voice test it's not a conversation between a doctor and patient it is there to generate a meaningful and purposive conversation a friendly conversation but in a formal conversation with the board members with the board members that includes a chairman and four other experts four other members drawn from diverse fields who has a combined experience of 300 years a combined knowledge of 300 years and you are going to generate a meaningful conversation which is up to generally the candidate of the years of between the 23 to 30 years so the candidate within the age of 23 to 30 years they are uh, you are facing the combined experience of 300 years so with this 300 years combined experience people you are going to start a formal conversation a directive conversation so remember it is not a pure question and answer through the conversation you are there to expose and explore your personality to explore your personality so what is it personality that is also mentioned they also mentioned that it is intent to judge your mental caliber mental caliber here through the conversation through the exploration of your values exploration of your personality they are trying to judge whether you are actually fit for this civil services job whether you are actually fit to work with the people because civil services offers such a great opportunity to bring about the changes in the lives of the people of different kinds for starting from the poor in the remote forest hilly tribal area to the rich people of this country you have to deal with with diverse kinds of the people with diverse requirements whether you are actually require whether you are suitable or not it is what tested in the mental caliber this is also this is they also mentioned that this is really an assessment of intellect not only intellectual qualities not only intellectual qualities means your aptitude your ability to learn things faster that is what your intellectual qualities combined with your intellectual qualities also includes your knowledge that you've gained in so many years and your logical reasoning your uh, iq your aptitude combined we can also call it as aptitude or intellectual qualities according apart from that it also test social rights because you will become a social person because how we are able to deal with the various kinds of the people that like i mentioned a little earlier people with different problems people with different requirements they come to you if you are a police officer they will come with people with different backgrounds they will come with different challenges and different problems suppose a woman sexually harassed came to you for a solution and how you will start the conversation with the victim that lady you should have that patience you should have that empathy you should have that compassion and you should have that readiness to help the people but how will you start the conversation how will you continue the conversation that is what all that comes as social rights your readiness to help poor farmers your readiness to help poor beggars your readiness to help destitutes different kinds of the people or your readiness to uh, start a conversation with the entrepreneurs the business people to set up a factory in a particular area to start a business in a particular area for the greater public good for the larger benefit of the society so you have to deal with the different stakeholders in the entire span of 20, 30 to 35 years career in the civil services that definitely requires a suitable social rights and it also tests the interest in the current affairs so don't think that the current affairs have already tested in the prelims or the mains but the current affairs writing a current affairs mains answer is different from your explain expressing your knowledge and your views and opinions of the latest happenings around you that happened before three to four months before the actual interview also matters a lot so here your interest in current affairs not only purely gaining the knowledge not only purely by hurting the facts and data related to current affairs but you are here to express you have to inculcate independent thought or expressing your own independent opinion that is what they test not only purely by hurting the facts
whether you are able to come up with a proper opinion or independent thought whether you are able to give a, a logical conclusion to that issue based on the reasoning based on your attitude based on your experience based on your knowledge based on the data that you have that is what the current affairs that current affairs spans from the current affairs related to your local area your place of birth your hometown or your state or your our national as national issues and also international issues the third aspect is mental alertness mental alertness means sometimes the chairman or the board member will ask four to five questions at a time in one shot they will shoot you four questions whether you are able to address all the four questions spontaneously or sometimes they will give you a big case study involving four to five crucial issues whether you are able to analyze these four four or five crucial issues are giving a innovative or meaningful solution that is what mental alertness within the board why these qualities are tested uh, again i wanted to uh, focus here is because most of the candidates they are in a escapist mode they think that interview is just question and answer session i will answer all the questions asked by the board members in 20 minutes and i will come out of the room as fast as possible i will have the feeling that i finished my interview don't have that escapist mode always have that energy enthusiasm and uh enthusiasm and readiness to maintain a good conversation skill to expose yourself in front of the board members so that be ready to be explore and to explore yourself to be explore and to explore yourself so that you will express the qualities or the values required for a civil servant which is going to be judged by the board members and critical powers of assimilation this is also an important aspect that is tested in the upsc personality test because there are different kinds of opinions different kinds of uh, logical expressions different kinds of reasonings are there for a particular issue whether you are able to uh, collect whether you are able to assimilate all types of opinions whether you are able to uh, whether you are able to mingle people mingle with the people of different opinions and whether you whether you are able to put all the people with different opinions on a same page is what critical power of assimilation because whether you, whatever service you are selected you have to work with various kinds of subordinates whether it is an administrative service or the police service or the revenue service or whatever postal service you are there to manage various kinds of subordinates to get the work done in the direction of the public interest when you manage this kind of various kinds of the subordinates you have to move all the people with different opinions and different kinds of backgrounds and different kinds of expressions on the same board to get the work done that is what this test is and clear and logical exposition 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 this is what also known as clarity of thought or th- clarity in your thought or your logical exposition similarly balance of judgment so whether you are able to come up with a proper judgment based on your reasoning or you are able to take extreme or you are vulnerable to take extreme judgments or extreme steps that is what is tested in the balance of judgment variety and depth of interest this is mostly related to the your daf this is detailed application form you have personal data the data related to your uh, your hometown or your educational background your hobbies or your work work experience or the employment or or related to your extra curricular activities or the co curricular activities or the sports this is to test how flexible how dynamic how seriously you are taking the life how interestingly you are making your life that is what is tested and ability to social cohesion and leadership this is to test your leadership qualities because i told you like i told you a little earlier you are whatever service you are there you will start your career in a leadership position you lead the organization if you are an ias officer you run a department if you are a police officer you run a law and order if you are a revenue services you are in revenue services you involved with 
deal with the different kinds of the people to collect the revenue for the country which is required for the administrators running the country for the socio economic development that requires that you have to direct the people to work under your leadership for a greater goal for the common goal that is what you are there to bring about changes you are there to initiate bring about some initiation for the in the positive direction for the common interest that is what these qualities are tested or intellectual and moral integrity not only the intellectual integrity this is also more moral integrity is also tested this is already tested in the gs4 paper ethics integrity aptitude that is already tested but what extra is required it is directly tested by the board members writing a gs ethics answer is different from testing your morality in front of the board with combined experience of 300 years this requires you are how committed you are there how committed you are for civil services to work honestly how sincere to how sincere you are towards the civil services how you uh, the, the your integrity is also tested in this aspect so to put all the qualities the aspect that is mentioned in the notification to put in simple words the following qualities are the values are tested in the upsc personality test or interview that is your awareness in your locality in your state in your country or globally internationally the second is honesty and integrity your honesty is tested you can't hide your feelings in front of the board member having 350 years combined experiences 350 years knowledge they have 350 years combined experiences they have right so they have already seen different kinds of stakeholders in their entire experience so you can't bluff in front of the board so so honesty be honest and be a person with integrity your attitude is also tested your attitude towards civil services why do you want to come to civil services why do you want to join ias why do you want to join ips or why what if some people have particular interest in indian audit and account services so how how committed you are to join that particular services and inquisitive inquisitiveness and trainable trait that is your curiosity to learn new things and whether you are trainable or not once you are selected you should be flexible enough and you should be dynamic enough to deal with the different kinds of challenges and the problems that you take up so for that they provide you training they provide you training initially two years training and also mid career training and some other trainings are done whether you are able to inculcate new qualities whether you are able to inculcate new traits required to solve different new problems that occur time and again that is what this tested i have already explained you the leadership qualities and the biggest aspect or the biggest qualities that a, uh, that a candidate should have is empathy and compassion when they want to really join civil service because you will are there to directly listen to the problems of the people you should place yourself in their place and respond to the their problems because people with different grievances and different requirements they come and meet you so you should this quality is also tested whether through conversation or through a big case study sometimes they ask you and rational balanced progressive evidence based opinion when there are uh, when there are some controversial issues are there some controversial topics are there controversial current affairs so whether you are able to come up with a proper and more rational judgment based on the evidence as well as your personal experience this is evidence and you bring about your personal experience that is what tested not simply going with the popular opinion whether you are able to come up with your critical analysis of the particular issue controversial issues whether you are able to express independently you whether you are able to come up with your independent opinion based on your the life experience based on your life experience as well as the evidence and it is also more uh, important is uh, that is consistency and coherence so throughout the conversation there should be consistency on your stance on your values 
on on the on on the stand on the opinions on your attitude there should be consistency there should not be any ambivalence and there should be coherence continuity between the sentences that you talk the clarity in thought the what you spoke in the first sentence should not be contradict the should not be contradict with this second statement so consistency and coherence is one of the basic aspects when you while maintaining a conversation with the board members that is also tested and always try to be optimistic of course criticality or the, you can be a critic of the government policies but based on the evidence you can critic but always try to be optimistic critic why i am saying that you should be critical critical of some of the policies only to highlight some of the negative aspects one side you should also highlight the positive aspects of the policy but should is also that there are certain problems are involved that but this can be resolved these problems can be solved so always try to be optimistic no negativity don't no do not be kindly don't be negative person don't be negative person in the interview process right always try to be optimistic so after going through the analysis of the syllabus mentioned in the notification so how can we start the preparation how can be ready for be prepared for the interview process or the personality test if you analyze these qualities and if you analyze the various requirements of the upsc interview or the personality test we can summarize all the uh, requirements in five five qualities are the five headings are the five important steps five steps one is self introspection second is current affairs and controversial issues third is detailed application form i think you already filled the detailed application form 1 which includes the your uh, date of birth your place of birth your educational background starting from the school to the college your employment information but you are also going to fill some of the crucial information after your mains result which is also called as detailed application form 2 which includes your extra curricular activities co curricular activities your hobbies your your involvement in sports or some of your achievements in the education or the extra curricular activities or some of the leadership positions you have taken whether you are in school or college and also the <coughs> also also the service preferences and the career preferences which is also asked which is also tested why you are opting for a particular service why a particular service is the first option and why you are opting for a particular career is there any reason is there any logical reasoning reasoning behind opting for a particular service or a particular uh, career or your, your own interest or the personal interest that is also uh, tested in the df2 and h human relation questions this is also tested by well, uh, most of the most of the occasions whether it is the chairman or the other board member they will also ask the questions related to your human uh, resources are uh, human relation questions and the expression and etiquettes so what kind of language you should use what kind of words you should choose or how you should behave in the interview hall so how these uh, steps we are going to explain these five steps in the coming few minutes so in the self introspection it is to assessment of your life your personal experience so far starting from your school your family your upbringing your uh, uh, social relations from your relations from your 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 uh, village or your hometown or your district or your friends various kinds of stakeholders that you have involved so far that experiences are tested your uh, data related to your home place or the district or the school or the college or your educational background your optional subject all are tested self introspection in the self introspection it's a good opportunity 
that is what it tested it is to explore yourself if you are a particular suppose if you are from a particular place you should be in a position to tell the significance of that particular place who are the famous people from the particular place and what are what kind of values you learned from that particular place and how the particular place has shaped your personality test right so if you have certain experience if you are from a particular school you should also learn what how the school shaped not only the intellectual qualities but also the other values other social rights how the school has helped in shaping your personality if you are from a particular educational background suppose you are from a education technological background you have done btech you should be able to you should be able to tell how that course helped you in shaping your personality in what are the various values and what are various kinds of rights you learn from that particular educational subject or the particular educational background how you will use that knowledge in your personal and real life as well as when while you while you are opting for a career in civil services that is what self introspection don't say simply that because uh, that time my father advised me i have chosen that subject or some of my friends told me to choose this particular stream that's why i chose it don't give that simple arguments give your real experience lifetime experiences why have chosen that course what you learned so show your interest show your involvement show your dynamism show your flexibility show your commitment sincerity in that particular course so this really test your involvement in the academics once you are involved when you are taking very serious your academics very seriously that it is an evidence that you are also take your career very seriously that is what tested in that suppose you have worked some okay, some organization employment as an employee you have taken some employment you worked work work in a particular organization suppose i worked in tcs uh, after soon after completion of my btech i worked as tcs in one of the board members once in mock one of the mock interviews asked me so what did you learn from your work experience in tcs what values you learned i talked about the tata code of conduct the history of tata company and how this tcs is different from other companies and how it shaped my career in as a technocrat and what kind of values that i learned with uh, while working in a team and what kind of uh, what kind of efficiency you inculcated what kind of experiences you learned while working on a project for a corporate for a corporate company these kinds of life experiences you will have when you work in a uh, in a particular employment soon after i worked as a pm rdf prime minister rural development fellowship this is a different work experience compared to the uh, corporate experiences so what every experience will teach you something will teach some values will teach some kind of will give you some kind of experiences every experiences will have a, a a impact on your personality will have an impact of personality so try to expose that values try to expose that those traits that you learned from each and every experiences and try to expose these honestly and with genuine don't give fake experiences or don't give fake expressions or don't be like a artificial conversation don't give an art, don't maintain a artificial conversation try to express whatever experience experiences you have after the self introspection you express them honestly and with genuinity the that is what is tested in the self introspection in the current affairs and controversial issues so while preparing for the current affairs so you identify the relevant and important current affairs especially uh, that just happened four to five months before your actual interview so identify and while identifying the current crucial current affairs at the state level the national level and the international level in the interview process it is very important to know the background of these current affairs for example recently one supreme court judgment came ews reservation and supreme court upheld the constitutional validity of the ews reservation so this is an important and a crucial current affairs topic 
an important current affair topic. So before you go through the Supreme Court judgment, you should learn what is the background. You should go through the background of the EWS reservation. What is the rationale behind EWS reservation? When was the government came up with EWS reservation? So who, who, are, act, who are going to actually benefit from the EWS reservation? Why there are so many so many read petitions have been filed on EWS reservations? What are the loop, legal loopholes or what are the constitutional challenges uh, before EWS reservations? So you go through that background. So learn some of the basic facts and that appear in the news. And this is also important that you should also know the some of the important definition related to the current affairs. For, for example, uh, most of the uh, out of the five members, in most of the panel members, in most of the boards, one one member will definitely touch upon the uh, current affairs related to the international relations and the economics, particularly about the foreign relations, particularly in the exports, imports, or balance of the payments. At point of time, you should know what is uh, current balance of payment, what is current account. What is capital account? What is current account deficit? And what is rupee appreciation? What is rupee depre depreciation? For example, in 2019, when I appeared in for interview, uh, it was Bharat Bhushan sir, Bharat Bhushan Vyas sir board. And Bharat Bhushan Vyas sir asked me most of the definition. He asked me. Don't think that I've already learned in economy. I learned for prelims or I learned for the mains. But writing a definition in mains examination is different and expressing the same definition with meaning, with complete meaning, with proper meaning in front of the board chairman is different. He asked me what is rupee appreciation and what is rupee depreciation. He also asked me what is current account and what is capital account. He also asked me what is primary deficit. Even though this is the basic knowledge, but you should express the definition like you are maintaining a conversation with a an expert so learn the basic definitions also don't ignore particularly it is related to the economy and science and technology learn the basic definition finally forming the opinions and giving innovative solutions when you learn the opinions while while while, while you while you are tested uh, for expressing give uh, for expressing opinions on a controversial topic you are pushed into a, a pressure kind of interview if you don't form that opinions by now itself, it is very difficult to uh, it will be difficult to express your free opinions and rational opinions or the evidence-based opinions in the within the interview hall, within the interview hall, within the board within the interview hall in front of the board members. So try to practice forming your own opinions and independent opinions from now itself. You, you may one can say that I will give my opinion in front of the board. Generally, people have that candidates will have that tendency that I will give answer, I will answer, I will express my opinion in front of the board directly. But believe me, it will not actually happen. If you don't practice, if you don't practice forming your own opinions independently, it will be very difficult to express your opinions with full confidence, with full energy. And full enthusiasm in front of the board members. So try to try to practice forming your opinions independently by by the group discussion or having a discussion with your friends or the like-minded people or one-to-one -one discussion with the experts or by by brainstorming on the topics. Finally, they will also ask you some of the controversial topics and new solution. So don't try to give the solution uh, which is all uh, don't which is already in practice, which is already being implemented, or don't try to give a generalistic solution. You try to be more innovative. You take a time. Don't no problem in taking time. You can ask, sir, can I have few seconds? Can I take few seconds? Uh, one of the good thing that UPSC board members will do that they'll keep you. A pen and paper in front of you, in front of the candidate. That is to test your spontaneity, you test your problem solving skills, your mental alertness, to test your whether you are actually thinking it or not.
So use that paper and pen productively. While they are asking for the solution, you take time, take few seconds, take the permission from the board members, the chairman. Take few seconds, work on the paper and from try to come up with a more creative and innovative solution that will fetch you more marks. Even the solution, even if the solution is not actually innovative, but they appreciate your thinking capacity, your appreciate your analy analytical skills to or your readiness to give proper or good solution, a creative solution or innovative solution. That will be that will be appreciated, not uh, rather than directly giving the solution. And that will create an impression of that you are in escapist mode. You are not actually thinking. You are you are waiting for or you are waiting to get out of that room as soon as possible. Don't create that impression. So take time while thinking for solutions. So while preparing for the current affairs, I am also trying to give some of the source list. Uh, generally, uh, because current affairs... So, so different kinds of uh, newspapers or different kinds of sources will give you different kinds of information and different uh, experience and uh, analyze. So I follow, I also suggest you to follow the Hindu and Indian Express and Times of India because in Delhi, most of the members, they refer to Times of India, current affairs topics. So j after declaration of the results in the entire interview preparation for two months, you also try to go through Times of India, Times of India and just follow how they are expressing the uh, current affairs, how they are writing the news related to the latest topics. You just follow the order in which they are trying to, uh, trying to express the current affairs, trying to provide the data related to the latest happenings. But to form the opinions on the controversial topics or the important topics related to the government policies or the government schemes or the government uh, the government initiatives, new initiatives, new kinds of initiatives, you try to follow the RSTV debates that will provide you more insights. Just observe and try to think on these debates logically with evidence based and based on this observation you try to form your own opinion you try to critically observe the rstv debates because debates is there are some people who talk positively about the initiative some people talk negatively about the initiative you try you try to observe both aspects keenly and try to form your own opinion. Your come to conclusion on the debate, on your own experience, on your own knowledge. So do that. You follow the RSTB debates. And before you go to the interview, you also refer to the some of the documents that you get from the PIB. That is related to the speeches of Honorable President, Honorable Vice President and Prime Minister on important occasions like Independence Day, Republic Day or their important foreign visits or some of the important uh, important days that India celebrate. So you follow the documents and you just observe what kind of language they are using, what kind of highlights they are mentioning in these documents, what kind of benefit that the various policies are imp uh, uh, creating to the people or giving to the people what kind of impact it is creating in the sign in the indian society not only the output you should also ready to uh, try to observe the outcome of various government policies that will be mentioned in this uh, in this uh, important docu uh, documents the speeches of the important per uh, persons important persons like honorable president vice president and prime minister and if you don't know, if you also wanted to get some of the information that you don't get from these pap in these newspapers that I mentioned, you can also Google for the data related to some of the crucial topics. Not, but not least, last but not least, after going through this, if you don't have that practice of group discussion with like-minded people, it will be difficult to come up on a come up with a proper conclusion or a proper opinion or a proper. Uh, judgment on a particular topic mostly controversial topic the next important thing in the interview process is df if i mention my experience in the interview upsc interview process my last interview in which i scored 193 
almost 90% of the questions came from my df whether it is chairman or the member 1 or member 2 or member 3 or member 4 except member 4 who asked two current affairs question all the questions came from my df directly so you can create a positive impression in front of the board members by having a, a good a proper detailed application form that you can create a positive impression in the first instance through your multifaceted DAF. Most of the people will fear to fill all the data related asked in the DAF. So they fear that I don't have sports, I don't have any achievements, I don't have extracurricular activities, I don't have good hobbies. But if you don't have that, it will be difficult for you to expose yourself in front of the board member to, to be tested for the values they are looking for. To be tested for the aspect they were looking for, for a suitability of the candidate which is mentioned in the notification. You can create a best first impression by making a multifaceted and multidimensional detailed application form. So generally detailed application form, like I said a little earlier in one of the one of the important in, in, important. Uh, topics they ask the data related to your home state home district home place graduation employment parents information your education college graduation subject optional employment so awareness achievements and scholarships sports ncc hobbies service preferences these are all tested in your detailed application form so, a multifaceted DIF will create a, a good impact, a good impression in front of the any board member, be it any board member, any chairman, any board that you appear. So, that will make you to express yourself in front of the board so that you will generate a meaningful conversation, a proactive conversation. It will help you to maintain proactive conversation. It will help you to direct the interview by yourself. If you have a multifaceted DAF, you can direct, you can, you can, you can have the loose ends for every question. You can leave some lo loose ends every question. So you can direct, you will have a proactive conversation so that the interview will be in your favor. Otherwise, if you don't have an interesting DAF, they will ask you some random topics, You whether you may know it or you may not be knowing it. So I'm trying to explain here that if you have an interesting and aggressive DAF and have a rigorous preparation, you will score more because interview will be in your direction, in your favor, unidimensional and unidimensional in sense that you can direct, you can expect the more questions in your favor and you will also try to expose yourself, explore your values, your traits, your your experiences, your interest, your enthusiasm, your energy in front of the board. But if you don't have an interesting, it will be more defensive kind of DAF. That means the interview will be very random. They can ask anything on the current affairs or anything related to the to topics mentioned in the topics mentioned in the notification for which you may know the answer or you may not be knowing the answer. So it will be kind of a random random interview but if you prepare the DAF with multifaceted aspects and you have a rigorous preparation then it will be a kind of interview which you can call it as a kill type of information where you will surely score 190 plus. I am telling based on my experiences 2019 and 20 experiences. In 2019 I had a DAF in which we, even though I had some sports or some kind of extracurricular activities, I thought that I have did in only in school and colleges. After that, I did not do. So I did not fill it. So the my interview was very random in 2019. They, they asked me various questions from various uh, current affairs related to the nuclear doctrine or they related to the science and technology. Some of the questions from the plus two. It was based up purely on the knowledge where even though I wanted to maintain a conversation because of the kinds of the or the nature of the questions that I faced, I could not maintain. So I ended up 
getting uh, only 160 in that interview. But the second time, I got more time. I realized the mistakes I did in 2019 interview. So I made my interview uh, my DAF with multifaceted and interesting things in the DAF, ranging from my hobbies, extracurricular activities, leadership qualities, my sports, my achievements in college and school and the leadership position that I have taken in my school and I worked on it and believe me all the my experiences also helped me a lot here whether it is TCS experience they ask questions from uh, software experience in TCS and also my experience from PMRDF. So when you fill all these type you should be also be careful while giving answers while coming while mentioning that. For example they asked me, sir asked me, you have different kinds of experiences and why do you want to come to civil services? They, sir asked me, chairman sir, TC Anand sir asked me. So one can give answer that so civil service is a more secured career option. It will give power and authority. It will give diverse experience. It's a more general answer, more pepped up answer and cooked up answer average answer but i tried to give the answer through my work experiences like pmrdf sir i was working as pmrdf in kalhandi district it was a great opportunity for me to work in tribal areas especially in kalhandi of odisha which is also most backward district also it is also notorious for hunger deaths so during these PMRDF stint, I observed the lives of the people directly and also I observed some of the unique problems of the people of Kalahandi district, particularly tribal people in two blocks. I took these problems to the collector sir. Even though collector sir was busy, he was very helpful to solve or addressing these problems. So even as PMRDF, if I, if I can do such kind of help directly to the people, what help, what kind of help, what kind of impact I can create if I join civil services. Likewise, I developed a story through my experience that such kind of stories and such kinds of experiences, if you bring about in front of the board, that will create a positive impact, that will create a, a meaningful and conversation, that will actually giving an impression that you are there to tell more about you, you are there to tell to expose more about you, you are there to tell, you are there to exp uh, express your values in front of the board. So through this story, I am, I was actually expressing my commitment, my sincerity, my value structure my values like empathy, compassion, my readiness to solve problems to the, of the people, my readiness to maintaining good conversation with the people as well as the people of higher authorities. These values I am trying to explain there. I was trying to explain through that. It was a, so if you fill such kind of DAF, it believe me, it was a godsend opportunity for you to people to express more, to tell about more not to get rid out of the interview. My hobbies were Mahabharata, reading, studying Mahabharata. So earlier in the same, this question was also faced in 2019 and the, the member four of the Anansar board was also, board. He, he also asked me, so why did you choose Mahabharata as hobbies? That time my approach was like, sir, from my childhood onwards, from my childhood onwards, I was very interested in Mahabharata. I got time. That's why I started reading Mahabharata. It was like an artificial answer. There was no liveliness in the conversation. It was like a doctor and patient's conversation. The same time in 2020, I changed my approach. Sir, I narrated story through my experience since my childhood because in during my childhood in front of my home 
all the elder used to gather and they discuss the various aspects of the mahabharata all the elders i used to sit and listen to uh, on some days and uh, some days i used to sit and listen to these discussions on mahabharata which my grandmother used to take me and i also observed that in my village or my family or everywhere that the elders used to take some ex excerpts from the mahabharata on important uh, issues or important controversial topics and there is also say that in telugu that tinte garlu tinali vinte bharatam vinali there is a say popular say and there is also popular say across india that what is there in mahabharata can be found elsewhere what is not there in the mahabharata cannot be found elsewhere so this is how i explained so this uh, struck me a lot sir uh, this uh, so i i also during the lockdown i also happened to see some of the serials retelly casted so i thought what is so interesting in mahabharata so i started reading so i started to uh, reinvent myself from my childhood experience that is how i explained why i started with this what i am what i was trying to convey in front of the board that you are very you are making your life very interesting you are trying to give importance to the cultural significance you are trying to give learn or the value structure in, exist in the society you are trying to learn new values you are ready to make your life very interesting and one thing you should also learn that hobbies are how productively you are wasting your time hobbies are nothing but productive wastes of your time how you are spending your time leisure time how you are able to spend your leisure time that means that and what kind of interest you are wasting your time so through such kind of hobbies you are expressing yourself that you are even though you are finding a leisure time you are using that leisure time more efficiently and more productively that means that you are very committed to your life when you are very committed to your life you are also committed to the lives of the other people you are also committed to take the other people very seriously that kind of value i am trying to explain i am I, i was trying to expose in front of the board as so, likewise you can have any any kind of any kinds of uh, hobbies so whatever hobby you you are you are you are trying you are going to write in the daf you try to tell a, a meaningful story or meaningful narration by bringing your life experiences that will create a liveliness in your conversation in front of the board maintain that liveliness create that interest create that create that amicable atmosphere to express yourself in front of the board not simply keeping your face like a patient in front of the doctor and saying that i got time time that's why i inculcated this hobby don't ever do that never ever do that if you make your hobby more interesting almost 90% of your interview is over 90% of your interview is over in a positive direction so you do that or curricular co curricular activities or extra curricular activities most of you might from different kinds of educational backgrounds different kinds of colleges you mention that you mention that if you have mentioned that you prepare you prepare you brainstorm that prepare a questions be prepared of questions and follow up questions up to up to a level of 3 to 4 cross questioning by the board member because time is there you can work on that sports sports they'll also sports is an important opportunity for you to express yourself sport is definitely when you are involved in a sports all the quality qualities that is mentioned in the syllabus are well tested are well valid in the sports also if you are a ncc all the 90% of the qualities they mentioned in the syllabus they will also you will also either directly or indirectly must have experiences in the sports or ncc awards and achievements awards and achievements if you really got the awards you will mention that so awards and achievements they will also test the genuinity of your information related to the awards they will also ask you what kind of award is it why did you get and which organization is providing so you mention that so 
you should be able to tell your achievements and through what through that award what kind of values you inculcated how the award has saved your personality and the further accomplishments in your life so extend the conversation give the loose ends direct the interview so wh what i am trying to make here is that when you have the multifaceted daf with interesting things rather than leaving some of the aspects blank and when you have that multifaceted daf and the rigorous preparation your rigorous preparation means you brainstorm the uh, the data you fill in the daf you work you will work through various questions and answers and follow up questions and through research proper research that is what comes under rigorous preparation if you do if you do this you will get more marks 190 plus it is a kill kind of interview 190 plus but if you are fearing to fill more aspects of your daf or if you are fearing to leave this daf most of the crucial aspects of your daf blank and you are giving more focus uh, to the current affairs or the knowledge or you are preparing like a quiz quiz session leaving leaving importance of the daf and giving less prepare less time to prepare daf on daf generally poor marks you will be awarded it will be definitely less than 140 140 kind of interview one kind 140 kind of interview or 140 to 146 but you have an interesting daf and you are able to come up with a proper narrative proper lively experiences proper story and you are able to express your values through the stories your commitment your dynamism your flexibility in front of the board that will create a positive impact and definitely it will be 190 plus could be highest score also so work on that so if you have a this kind of daf almost 90% of your interview is over this is my based on 2020 interview experience whether it is chairman sir or m1 m2 go m member 1 member 2 or member 3 or member 4 all they have asked me questions from df only because i had a very interesting daf my experiences i have different kinds of experiences different kinds of hobbies even uh, one of my hobbies was organic farming even though chairmen are finished that tc anand sir finished his part of asking questions but while m while m member 4 was asking me questions he suddenly saw the organic farming was hobby and he interrupted m4 and asked me some questions related to organic farming that is related to the issue organic farming and issues related to the sri lankan crisis since organic farming is my interest, I worked upon very well it, on the topic very well. I also touched upon the current affairs related to my hobbies because because of the organic farming, Sri Lanka there was food crisis. Then chairman sir asked me, Mr. Rao, if organic farming good for health, good for the country, then tell me why Sri Lanka is facing food crisis. Then my answer was. Sir, organic farming is definitely good for health. It will less utilize. Uh, it will have less uses of fertilizers and pesticides, of chem, uh, which have artificial pesticides and artificial fertilizers. But before we go to the adoption of organic farming, we should do thorough research and development on the different kinds of agroclimatic zones. Whether organic farming is really fit into that particular agroclimatic zone, because all through the years we have been adopting the usage of artificial and chemical fertilizers and pesticides. So land has been accustomed to that practice. If you suddenly shift to the organic farming, there will be a there will be fluctuations in the production. Only after pilot implementation, only after proper R and D, we should. Suddenly shift to the organic farming. In the case of Sri Lanka, they did not do this. They suddenly implemented organic farming. They forced farmers to go for organic farming suddenly without doing this proper research and development. That's why they are facing this crisis. This is how you should give your logical conclusions. 
so you should think multi dimensionally how how that comes only you have the rigorous preparation so by brainstorming writing various kinds of questions expecting various kinds of dimensions and preparing on that linking with the current affairs that will give you more marks but if you want to give more of the uh, data asked in the def blank and giving only importance to the random topics and less emphasis to the def generally you will score less so work on that so since already one month is over in a month or in next month already you must have finished your def and you are also gearing up for filling daf2 you work on this you self introspect yourself and identify various kinds of data related to your school college sports achievements so if you don't have any sports you can also as a team work is a sport team engagement is a sport you work on that how you you should come up with a story how it can be a sport and what are the learnings from that sport if you have don't have a proper hobby you come up with a hobby which will make you to express yourself or which will make you to use the time productively uh, laser time productively and through that hobby you can express yourself but working on that you can work on that hobby you can prepare some questions on that you can also prepare some cross questions on that so so how will you fill the daf you must have already filled the df1 df2 so you should first prepare the first draft this can be this is the uh, the time between the mains and mains results is the best time for preparing the first draft don't think that once the mains result is over once the mains result comes i will work on interview i will work on daf remember me that will not work that doesn't work the time will be very in the time will be lesser you will feel pressurized so this is the time you work on that you sit alone self introspect you work write take a paper note down what are your experiences what are your in involvements what are your achievements whether it is in school or college or your employment or your organization whatever you draw that you just note down the and identify where which aspects you can take up seriously and write on the draft and work on it and be prepared to be tested in front of the board so right after writing the preliminary set of the questions you just try to come up with write your own answers just jot down some of your own answers some answers for the preliminary set of the questions that you make suppose if it is related to kabaddi sport so you might have played that kabaddi long back while while you were in school but after that you left it you, you didn't play in your junior college or you didn't play in your college or you there are almost a gap of 10 to 15 year 10 15 years so you may hesitate to feel whether you should feel kabaddi or not but just sit alone think when you played kabaddi how you used to play kabaddi and what kind of experience you had when you while you were playing kabaddi and how you used to engage with your team while you were playing while you were playing kabaddi whether you are able to take your own decisions or simply listening to the captain's dictates like that you just mention your experiences and just also think about the rules of the kabaddi and what is your role in the kabaddi whether you are a uh, whether you are a defender whether you are a something like that you just note down and just try to write answers on that also try to follow up the questions and try to link with this how kabaddi is important for india and why kabaddi has been backward compared to cricket and how why kabaddi is now gaining getting more popularity gaining popularity these all set of questions you can expect it can also generate more interesting and engaging conversation with the board members you try to do that and draft redraft so make the first draft make some primary questions and write answers again redraft this kind of uh, i can sim i can simply put like make questions 
and through questions you just link the qualities expected from you mentioned in the syllabus you make different kinds of questions on def and whether just think whether these through these questions whether you are exposing the qualities expected from the board like the i explained at the beginning of the video just questions and try to link the qualities and you through these questions you try to display the qualities through your answers through kind of answers you are coming up with you try to display the qualities in front of the board and come up with a proper delivery so try to display the qualities and finally you come with the delivery or the final answer after redraft and final draft is over you try to come up with the delivery and with that delivery with that proper answer you are trying to express the qualities your values your efficiency your personal suitability to the civil services and score more you follow this approach in this time you have the next 40 to 45 days before actual declaration of the mains result take your daf 1 also work on what kind of the fields you are going to fill in our daf 2 try to generate more questions and questions should be to not a whizzing quiz type questions not what not who not where the questions through questions you are there to maintaining a productive conversation proactive conversation with the board members through proactive conversation you are trying to express some of the qualities and you are trying to display the qualities and after this work and rework and drafting and redraft you are ready to for the final delivery you work on this aspects questions qualities display deliver and get more score so this is one of the generally through graduation subject people they take different graduation subject and when it comes to the ups examination they take different optional subjects if it is same they they will also expect you to express uh, they will also expect more from the candidate if it is different you should also ready to give reasons for example i've done my btech in electrical and electronics engineering but my literature was my optional literature was my optional so some of the board member ask me you have done electrical engineering but you have selected literature as optional in ups examination so even though electrical is available why didn't you choose electrical engineering so people think that they will tell that sir in graduation i didn't learn many things in graduation i studied only for the examination i studied only the last minute before the actual examination i scored less than 60% or 70% i didn't study the subject properly don't give that that gives that you are not serious on your academics you are not so serious or not so committed but rather you can restructure that answer sir since my childhood days on boards i am worth much interested towards literature and learning new aspects and new developments in the literature I also studied in telugu medium to my 12th class and so i am my basic quality of mind is that i am also flexible enough and uh, my basic quality is also inquisitive and learn i am ready to learn new things and from through that uh, to experience a sense of joy in learning new things so you can frame your answer like that not only giving that negative aspect or the negative answer so you try to do that so you should show that energy and enthusiasm in every answer and you can also for oh, graduation subject you can also say that my father told me that's why i have chosen this graduation subject or some of the expert of that particular day told me that's why i chose engineering and electrical engineering yeah, otherwise i did not have interest don't ever expect even though if really don't have interest also but you show some positive and optimisticness energy if you get the questions related to the graduation subject so how graduation help you to learn to learn new information new skills new knowledge new values 
new qualities how it saved your personality how it is going to save your career in civil services similarly optional subjects also to what kind of new things you learned what kind of values you learned what kind of efficiency you learned what kind of dynamism and flexibility you learned from optional how it is going to save your career in civil services how you are going to use your optional subject knowledge in civil services you should be ready for all this don't say that i don't think anthropology suppose if your optional is anthropology sir if they if you face the questions like how tell me how anthropology will be helpful in your career in civil services don't say that sir anthropology will give me more score less syllabus that's why i have chosen this subject otherwise i don't think anthropology is going to help me in don't say that you think you self introspect the various chapters that you learned in anthropology and just do some brainstorm and identify the kinds of qualities and the kinds of values you learned in anthropology which you can actually implement in civil services you just do that brainstorming so you work on that optional and optional and graduation subject and most of the candidates the now appearing for civil services are from uh, technological background so you if you are uh, a fresh candidate like if you finished your graduation just two or three years before you are also ready for questions related to your btech project or the graduation project most of the candidates will ignore that don't ignore even though you scored less marks on your graduation subject so don't uh, ignore some of the basic information in your graduation subject basic knowledge basics like what kind of uh, suppose if i am from electrical background the some of the basic question is like what kind of current is used in electrical trains indian railways whether it is dc current or ac current what is the rating of the fan used in indian railways these are some of the basic questions you don't ignore that that if you ignore and if you are not able to come up with some basic answers to these basic questions that you are not serious in your life you are ex you are telling the board that you are not serious in your career you are not so serious in the graduation you are not so committed to your graduation subject so never ever do that prepare for that if it is really complex is you you can say that sir it's been long uh, you can say that uh, um, right now i am not able to recollect i will go through it once the interview is over so that you are ready to learn that but some basic questions you work on it similarly graduation project also you should work on that what kind of innovative solution if you provide you you provided in the graduation subject so through that you express your technocrat qualities to technocrat you are ready to start career as bureaucrat so that so that path i am a efficient technocrat i proved already in to that project the technocracy knowledge i am going to use for the welfare of the people for the development of the country i am ready i am a technocrat ready to be a bureaucrat you should use that tendency you should use that aspect so if you are a technical background or a science and technology background you should also go through the some of the latest happenings and current affairs in that that will fetch you more marks if if you face any question on that it is mentioned in the notification they look for team spirit if you have a co curricular activities extra curricular activities in your college like i was the coordinator for a technical festival so through technical festival you will organize various kinds of events in engineering and technology that means that you have to manage different teams you have to manage different participants come from different universities and colleges so that shows your team spirit and leadership qualities from your the college days itself thus qualities you are going to use in that already you have experienced and you achieved and you have accomplished you are going to use this in civil services so if you have that you mention that work on that and express these qualities honesty compassion suppose you worked in ngo i worked in pmrdf and i worked with different kinds of ngos so if you work ngos is also leadership qualities 
if you worked in ngos to work with different teams team event is also sport what do you mean by ngos that means that you are responsible to the problems of the weak vulnerable people poor people and you are ready to at least listen to these problems and you are ready to help them either directly or indirectly so these qualities are tested the consistency is there in your life you are taking this life seriously you are committed towards your life your career and you are consistently doing some efforts in that direction so all these values are tested and you should be ready to express these values through the answers follow that approach questions link the questions with the qualities this kind of qualities and display these qualities in your answers or the rough drafts and finally deliver these values through your answers final answers are in front of the board members and get more so one kind of after the draft the hr kind of questions like generally chairman sir or chairman ma chairperson ma'am will ask so you have different kinds of experiences you are working in a particular organization with a particular salary and why do you want to come to civil services why do you want to come to ias or why do you want to join ips why do you want to join irs or some people will opt i indian audit and account services as a first option so this is a very important opportunity it's really a good opportunity to express yourself don't give cooked up answers don't give artificial answers tell your commitment tell your life experiences and what what experiences and what kind of goals you have what kind of aims you have and why you wanted to come to civil service in order to achieve these goals through experience never ever give that if i come to civil service civil service give me privileges and opportunities power and i will get the prestige and respect in the society it will give me diversity these are generalist things anybody who can tell that some people will say diversity anyone can tell that even a 10th class candidate or at least a plus 2 candidate can tell that they will have a lot of respect and diversity that is a cooked up cup answers don't do that do self introspection and come up with a lively answer bringing up your experiences bring about your experiences and link up with this this is a good opportunity for you to express your qualities like why do you want to leave that job and come to civil services why do you want to particular cadre these are open ended questions and related to your basket related to your personality express your personality come up with a story a good and engaging and lively story again they want to check see remember that you are maintaining a mean, meaningful conversation and formal conversation with combined experience of 300 years so they for them it will be very easy to identify whether you are giving bluffing or you are giving an artificial answer or a honest answer so if you link with the experiences you are definitely going to express your honesty integrity energy and commitment and enthusiasm to your civil services and if you are also able to link your technological knowledge your graduation knowledge your engineering knowledge your experience knowledge suppose you are a particular computer science background and you worked in a reputed organization and want to work with civil service work work in civil services you can bring your knowledge you proved you can bring your technocracy aspects to bureaucracy use your creativity and innovation also in that no problem in that so again so whether you have really committed to civil service you have that clarity or not these values are tested like i explained earlier compassion leadership consistency and coherence all these values are again tested in hr questions and again opinion based questions and controversies again this is an a important aspect where in which where where and in which you should be more careful because if you don't have clarity you will end up in giving 
superficial opinion superficial conclusion which is very very dangerous which will end up in getting less than 120 marks also even though you scored very high in mains or even though you have very good knowledge but if you are lacking clarity and the proper rationality judgment it will pull down your interview score whether you will not be in the list or even though you are on the list you will not get desired service and desired card so while giving the opinions on the controversial topics understand the social significance of the topic and try to link the topic with the legal spirit the constitutional values or the preamble and the balance of judgment is also already mentioned in this try to link with the balance of judgment and try to come up with a conclusion that take all the facts into consideration take all the stakeholders into consideration take your life experience into consideration and try to come up with an independent and more evidence based opinion and expression so sometimes you also face the dilemma whether i should be rigid or flexible so you should be careful whether you are rigid or flexible enough to change your opinions keeping in view of the time and need there is no wrong in that there is no wrong in that so this they are also testing you whether you are a conventional rigid person or flexible person taking risks for the societal good societal good you are ready to take risk not for your good not for your benefit for the common good that is also tested here so whether sometimes you also have the confusion whether i should go against the government or i should be critical with the government so there is nothing wrong in critical of the government if there is a proper evidence sometimes you should not speak the language of the government if there is some flaw in the government policy that is an actually average candidate will do if you really have that substantial flaw substantial problem in the government policy you try to express but not in a negative manner but in a optimistic in a optimistic way you express the problem in the government policy you should sometimes you should be critical of government also don't always support the government like a mains answer some of the board they are asking the case studies i faced two case studies in 2020 interview by the lady member m3 because i worked in uh, remote areas of odisha kalahandi one is illyrian forest areas so all this case study related to the tribal development and the tribal problems in the environmental conservation the case study is again a good opportunity for you to get more marks to get rewarded in the interview so when you face a case study don't be <coughs> and don't be hasty don't be fearful this is a good opportunity i told you already the board member will keep a paper and pen use make use of the paper and pen because by giving case study the values they are going to test are the qualities the traits they are going to test are your spontaneity whether mental alertness your spontaneity your readiness to solve the problems problem solving skills in whether you are able to come up with the best practices provide best practices innovative solution so and also you can also give some wit in positive way you can also give some wit in because you can smile don't be seriously don't be like a patient you should have a smile on your face through entire conversation and if it is related to the case study you can increase your smile on the face you can create a wit in the uh, wit in the board hall, in the hall interview hall because they are also boring board members also boring they are they are interviewing 12 candidates a day for the long process of 2 months and if you are one among the average candidates there is no interest in this you can also create interest in a witty manner and a positive manner by giving in your answers that will create a positive impact
the board members will remember one thing the board members will remember only the kind of highlighting answers they will, they are, you are giving they will not remember what kind of questions they ask you what kind of answers you you give the board members will remember only the kind of answers highlighting answers you are giving or the positive impact you created in one some 3 to 4 answers that only generally remember by the board members and those interviews will get more marks 190 plus interviews and sometimes 206 or 210 but while giving the answers don't be superficial don't be ideal be practical as much as possible while giving the answer uh, solutions in the case study giving the solutions in the case studies they will give you big case studies you should be attentive you should be mentally alert and you should ready to touch upon all the aspects asked by the member in the do that so make that atmosphere lively by making use of paper and pen even though the case study doesn't require the uses of paper and pen you just act like you are using paper and pen that makes that you are lively in the interview hall not a artificial presence you are giving not artificial answers so it is a if you are facing this your case studies definitely it is a good opportunity gods and opportunity for you within that 30 minutes so while giving the case studies if it is related to the policy wise you also touch upon the constitutional legal provisions and the law and order morality and also the various kinds of the stakeholders and who are all getting benefit but understand the difference between this case study of this gs4 case study and this case study gs4 you can write more with a uh, more aspect multi dimensional answers multi dimensional answers by bringing more ethical theories and come up with a conclusion but here it is a test of your spontaneity there you will have a lot of time each case study you will have at least you can spend at least 12 minutes but here case study that requires a spontaneity so this case study answer you can give linking with the values they are looking for and the kind of benefit the people are getting and give some creative and innovative solutions linking with the legal and constitutional provisions apart from that there are also some miscellaneous topics they touch upon like date of birth or the place date of interview a person with the same name or meaning of the name you can do some basic work on this apart from that one thing i observed also that they will ask some flat questions in the interview like open ended questions like can you tell me what are the problems in the agriculture sector of india this is some of the flat question open ended questions anyone can answer can come up with some answer but the answer should not be like a main answer like you cannot say that there is only 40 percent is is getting irrigation 60 percent is rain shadow fragmentation of land holdings marketing problems lack of best seeds these are all main answer but you should create a positive Im impact such kind of answers you should also think that you are a innovative person you're a different person you're an intellectual person you can say that yes sir this is i do agree with that there are different problems in the agriculture but since i am from a agriculture family bring you if you are from agriculture family bring your experience if you are from a rural family bring your experience as for i observe as for my experience by being a agriculture by being a son of a farmer or by being from a rural area which dependent on agriculture predominantly dependent on agriculture the steps taken by the government are addressing only short term problems not focusing on the long term problems you divide the problem into two different analyze the problem and give an innovative answer don't be a cooked up answer don't give a a ready made answer like you are writing a main answer if you are giving that it is a most dangerous that will give you only one if you if uh, in the questions and qualities if you 
while making your answers while coming up with answers if you are coming up with such kind of answer it is more dangerous that will give you only 150 to 160 but if you divide the problem into different parts like there are the short term they are addressing only short term or they are taking only short term measures or they are addressing only short term hiccups not focusing in the long terms and you divide it and giving the problems and you are giving the long term solution and you will create a positive impact and they definitely will fetch you 190 plus kind of marks a kill type of interview that is definitely a kill type of interview not an average interview either you should be that and or this end don't give this ready made answers which is dangerous because you can't rectify your mistakes in the next in cycle also next process also so you don't ever avoid that flat kind of questions don't try to give mains kind of answers try to think try to give a innovative and creative answers on that make that questions more lively and try to maintain a expert kind of conversation with the board members now how to frame answers so i told you this is the time where you can work on the questions and what kind of answers what kind of questions you can make and how can use your what how can you start the answer how can you begin the conversation in uh, how can begin the conversation with the board members one thing that i keep on telling maintain a smile maintain a smile don't keep your face like as if you are entering into the hell and you are ready to escape that room are you ready to come out of the room within 20 minutes as soon as possible don't have a confidence and smile so that confidence and smile while entering you always try to walk in like a civil servant to come out as one have that confidence you are ready to be questioned maintain that confidence that you are ready to express yourself more in front of the treat them like you are speaking to the elders your elders in your family five elders but in a formal conversation so what kind of language you can use what kind how can you start so you can have a small introduction so acknowledging the issue of that for example uh, last year in 2020 interview they asked me uh, one question related to the environmental conversation con conservation and development then i told i thank the board member actually with a small with a light smile thank you ma'am for asking me this question because i also feel it is more relevant in the present context there is nothing wrong that because you are acknowledging the gravity of the issue you are understanding the seriousness of the issue like they understood so both are in same pace they also consider that it is a serious issue you also acknowledging that is yes ma'am thank you for asking me this question because i also feel it is more relevant and it requires an urgent attention that is how i started my similarly one question was related to the tribal role in and conservation of medicinal plants of the medicine so there also thank you for bringing this issue i also thank this because i observed what i observed so acknowledging that give a smile and give a small and more crisp introduction use your ethics you can also use your constitutional values because it is also constitutionally this is more relevant ma'am or relevant sir constitutional also this is mentioned sir this is the fundamental rights sir so you can have that bring these legal provisions ethical issues constitutional issues seriousness of the problem relevance of the problem applicable to the latest latest context use that in the introduction and body you will actually give the actual solution anyway based on your knowledge or based on your experience anyway you are expressing that so when in the acknowledging itself you are express you are expressing that you are confident you are ready to make conversation with the board members not answering if you really give the, start your introduction or answer with these well with these in mind keeping with these in mind 
the board member will sense that you are not answering actually you are ready to maintain conversation so that itself decide and conclusion like i told you many occasions in this video you should always be optimistic right mentioning some of the data statistics committee reports and also legal provisions try to be most optimistic that doesn't mean that you should not be critical of the government you should critical of the government also in the same intention let me explain you let me narrate my experience in the interview mr rao you worked in kalahandi which is also affected with left left wing extremism but do you think odisha has been successful in dealing with the left wing extremism problem in some of the district like malkangiri koraput or kalahandi then i told yes sir it was a serious problem in 90s now the intensity of the left wing extremism is reduced in kalahandi but it is still serious problem in some of the as districts of koraput and malkangiri but i don't think government has taken steps and implemented them with letter and spirit there are still some problems in the government's approach there are developmental as developmental intervention from the government but there are corruption highly prevalent corruption there are security lapses government is not able to take help from the government central government there are infrastructure lacunas government is also doing but when it actually comes to the ground there are different problems sir so the, even though there are problems but they are to this uh, up to here they have been successful in reducing the intensity i feel i am very optimistic that by filling the gaps in these approach i am very sure that the government is going to address this problem seriously or completely that is how i end it so you can be critical but be more optimistic so like while framing the answers what kind of language you can use this is also this so upsc remember that upsc is never expecting a a difficult vocabulary from the candidate uh, they are expecting you to express in simple language a, which is very clear very coherent and expressing your value structure but in a formal language but in a formal way even though upsc is also remember one thing upsc is also giving an opportunity to do interview in vernacular language regional languages also not only in english but whatever may be the language language is not a barrier but what is required is is expression of yourself more clearly expression of your value structure expression of your commitment to the service expression of your eagerness to join civil services to work with people this is what they are express expressing in a formal way for maintaining a conversation be it a telugu language or english or hindi or tamil whatever there are their translators but maintain the conversation be formal and while using the languages also avoid the extreme and strong words do never do that it is very bad or very worse never do that if you want to express the problem if you want to highlight the problem you can use the words like like it is less desirable it is not needed or it is not advisable use that you can use phrases or you can use the uh, subjective words like desirable optimum advisable like use that if you use this extreme words the meaning that you wanted to convey will be conveyed in different way actually the meaning will be changed so never ever using do uh, never ever use the strong words always use the simple words the pr most practiced words with simple words because as a civil servant you are going to work in rural areas you are going to work with the common man you are not going to work in work with foreigners unless it is indian foreign service so what is required you are going to work with the indian government that doesn't mean that you are that that means that you are going to deal with people with various kinds of socio economical backgrounds so use always 
a simple long base they are not expecting you a difficult vocabulary from the candidate if you want to make a point use phrases use phrases if you want to clearly want make a point but no generalized language we can there are many problems sir we can do that sir avoid that do that objective words and use phrases to make your points like i told you you can also criticism if you want to criticize criticize the government you can use only constructive criticism don't use extreme words here also and if you want you can also if you don't have the clarity on a particular fact or a particular policy or a particular data you can avoid you can say that sir in my limited understanding you can use such phrases like as far as i know in my limited knowledge use that that shows that you are expressing your humble and try to bring more dimensions here try to bring more dimensions social political any questions if it is related to policy or any issue or bring try to bring as many as uh, dimensions whether it is a case study or any uh, question related to the current affairs or controversial issues or your your stand on a particular issue or your life experience your, some of the questions related to your daf or like if you are very interested in sports so they may ask you how sports can help you can bring like socially these are the benefits politically these are the benefits economically these are the benefits international relations these are the benefits so you have that multi dimensional approach one of the i also wanted to make one point here that while uh, before going that overall preparation if you don't know the answer you tell that don't know don't try to bluff in front of the board after all you are also satisfy the ego of the board members no one be no candidate can be a perfect candidate it is there is no rule that all people should candidate should know all the questions if you, there is nothing wrong in not answering one or two questions in my interview in which i scored 193 i could not answer three questions asked by the member four member four asked me only five questions and i asked only two questions i answered only two questions three questions i could not answer in that member four was trying to ask further chairman sir intervened and i think it's it's it is enough uh, he said okay he helped me because if you are giving some striking answers in earlier questions the chairman and the other members will also try to help you try to so you also understand that no need to answer all the questions it is okay to not to answer some of the questions you act you actually don't know mainly related to the facts or the data or the statistics if you have that partial knowledge you can show that as as far as i know as per my little understanding or little knowledge you can use that phrases so so far we talked about the importance of upsc personality test the syllabus mentioned in the upsc notification connecting to the interview or the various aspect that the board is looking from the candidate or testing from the candidate various approaches and the strategies required to get more marks and uh, strategies to get more marks out of daf how to fill daf how to prepare current affairs how to uh, get ready for hr type questions and how to answer opinion opinion based and controversial issues we discussed all these in a nutshell but now how to get the right approach how to inculcate the right approach it is through only through the right preparation so how our overall preparation in interview should be so overall interview uh, uh, the approach or the proper strategy we can adopt only by through proper preparation right preparation and right guidance if you have that right path and right guidance we can inculcate or we can learn the approaches to get more marks in the interview we can easily learn so uh, so for that we need a speaking practice group discussion brainstorming and the strategies to make note and revise it and revise it and again uh, remembering certain relevant and key points from the note so coming to the speaking practice uh, most of us lack this speaking skills 
most of us lack these speaking skills because of our technical background education or uh, less participation in the extracurricular activities or pro-curricular activities or debates in this. We, we realize the importance of speaking only while only when we start the U UPSC preparation or civil service preparation. So, to <coughs> practice effective speaking and with confidence and with uh, coherence and clarity, we can adopt mirror practice. Mirror practice is the best judge. You are the best judge for yourself and that can be practiced only through mirror. So, uh, in 2019 and 20, even though I recognized some flaws in my uh, UPSC interview preparation, I could not do mirror practice. So, in 2020, uh, in Sarachandra ISA Academy, there was a big mirror arranged. And I used to, every day during the lockdown, I used to practice for 15 to 20 minutes in the mirror practice. So, while uh, during the mirror practice, I realized that some facial expressions also. I was very serious while talking in 2019 interview. But how to maintain that smile, how to maintain that pleasantness in your face while answering some of the questions in the UPSC interview, uh, you can practice and you can uh, adopt or uh, you can maintain that pleasantness only through mirror practice. And if you, if you don't have that mirror practice, you can also record your uh, answers, your responses through mobile phone or camera and you can look into it after uh, you can look into it afterwards and you can correct you can identify the mistakes you can identify the flaws in your answers or lack of confidence or whether you are very serious in giving responses you can look into that recorded video and correct the mistakes but uh, apart from this speaking practice to get the right approach to change your approach to change your proactive uh, gear, to change your method to giving proactive answers only you can get through one to one or uh, one to one uh, one to one mock interviews or one to one from a expert so i could easily change my approach from 2019 to 2020 through one to one sessions from sharat sir here here sharat sir used to take every day one to uh, every day half an hour to one hour one to one session from every aspects of my DAF, every term or every keyword that I mentioned in the DAF. Likewise, I had around 20 to 20 to 25 one to one sessions. So it was very helpful for me. For example, I was from a deemed university. One day he took questions on one to uh, one to one session on uh, deemed university and what is called a deemed university, why it is called, what, why we require deemed universities, how it is different from other universities. Likewise, we had around 45 minutes discussion on that aspect of my DAF, that uh, aspect of DIM. Another time, my course entirely one-to-one -one session on electrical engineering based questions. Another day, one-to-one -one discussion on my hobbies like Mahabharata and Ramayana. Another day, my district. On some other day, um, my my organic farming, my uh, another hobby, organic farming and work experience someday. Likewise, this one-to-one -one session helped me a lot to think multidimensionally to come up with uh, multifaceted answer and to change my approach and to give a proactive and engaging and to generate an engaging conversation. It was very helpful. It was also very helpful me to generate a pleasant conversation with the board members. After one-to-one -one discussion, uh, the, the panel members here also conducted two, three mock interviews consisting of uh, bureaucrats who are already in services who cleared the UPS examination in the last four to five years who completely knew the nuances of UPS interview like IIS officers, IRS officers. They set up a panel and they I attended two, three mock interviews and which was very helpful. Remember, uh, before my actual interview, which was on September 20th, one week before that, I had took, I had taken, I had taken a final interview, almost 20 to 30 persons questions from that final mock interview. Since I had already had a one-to-one -one sessions and I already developed a more engaging answers, more engaging and proactive answers, it was very helpful and it was very easy for me to give that answer with displaying the qualities they are uh, looking from the candidate in the actual interview on September 20th. So, one-to-one -one session is very helpful. You find a right guidance to have one-to-one -one session or to find a right expert to have 
वन टू वन सेशन सिमिलरली दे हैड अ स्टिमुलेटिंग इंटरव्यू इयर आल्सो सी एक्चुअली मोस्ट ऑफ अस व्हेन वी अटेंड मॉक इंटरव्यूज वी टेंड टू गिव मॉक इंटरव्यूज इन स्मॉल रूम्स बट एक्चुअल रूम वाज वेरी बिग रूम इज वेरी बिगर एक्चुअल यूपीएससी बोर्ड रूम इज वेरी बिगर कंपेयर टू दिस हियर एट सरचंद्र एकेडमी दे सेट अप ए बिग चांबर actually sim- actually simulating the original interview board room they have set up there i was very fortunate to give uh, two three mock interviews in that environment so try to give uh, mock interviews in such real uh, s- uh, environment so that it will be like a simulation of actual interview it was also very helpful brainstorming question and answers uh, during the interview one to one one to one session apart from discussing some of the important questions uh we also used to brainstorm uh, various aspects of the questions that can come from the data we mentioned in the daf or the current affairs or the some of the latest happenings or the controversial i used to brainstorm and i used to maintain a big book and write every day used to write various aspects uh, the questions that can come from uh, multi dimensional aspects and i used to brainstorm answers also what if if the question is asked like that how can i give a response how can uh, bring about my life experiences how can my bring how can i bring my uh, uh, work experience here whether it is a software experience or the pmrdf experiences how can bring my optional knowledge here i used to think even if i watch a movie also i used to think about the interview i can quote some of the excerpts from the movie some of the scenes from the movie also here at the interview that shows the liveliness that shows the, that you are very curious you are very enthusiastic to present yourself in front of the board not you are not there to escape from the board have that approach have that energy have that enthusiasm to present you are there to you are ready to be explored from the board have that aspect have that approach that will fetch you 190 plus kind of interview similarly uh, while brainstorming you also required to make some notes some very rough notes whether it is current affairs or from the hobbies or from the uh, data related to your college or place of but whatever what your hobby uh, your work experience or some of the important government interventions or schemes you need to make notes so that it is it is like a ready it is a, it is a kind of ready made notes for you so how can you jot down or how can you make note of it so what you do is that you take a keyword you do google it search in the internet make some 10 to 15 relevant points read it read only 10 to 15 relevant points because now it is the era of internet uh, you have a lot of online content which will confuse you but be careful in noting down or reading only 10 to 15 relevant points and out of the 10 to 15 relevant points make note of only 10 important and crucial points revise it revise it and try to include only 6 to 8 relevant points in your answers you practice the approach in the next 40 to 50 days while you when you before you actually appear for the interview that will help you to come up with a more proactive more engaging and more lively answer similarly you also develop more questions and answers to make new questions from the questions and answers you try to make new questions and new answers this approach will help you to cover almost all the aspects of the keywords that you mentioned in the daf finally i want to make one point very clearly that upsc preparation starts with interview and ends with interview this is a popular belief in the upsc preparation circle why i am using this popular say or believe here is that generally most of the candidates look interview as a separate aspect of the exam separate entity of the exam but actually interview process has been integral part of the upsc examination you should not look it as a separate entity you should not look uh like you should not treat it like i will start interview preparation only after prelims or only after mains results it should be an it should be an integral part of your preparation since from the day one to the final the final day when you actually clear the upsc examination with flying colors so 
the people who are waiting for the results or the people who are just started preparation or the people who are preparing to give your attempt in the next year uh, to next year or next two three years keep this point mind keep this point in mind very clearly because ups examination has been nowadays very dynamic and very flexible this is not purely test of your knowledge where you will buy a lot of books a lot of content and vomit in the examination hall but the interview now ups has been evolving and has become very flexible and very dynamic that it also requires independent thought independent opinion on the latest happenings on the controversial issues or the current affairs or some of the issues happening around you or the some of the important uh, important happenings around you so you should have the develop an independent thought and independent opinion which cannot be developed in a day or two independent thought and independent opinion is an integral part of one's personality the personality cannot be developed in a day or two or in a month or two it should be through a practice it should be through your life experience it should be through the, it should be a long process it should it, it will evolve through a long process so the people who started preparation keep this mind so with this approach with this uh, right in mind you just continue with your preparation people who are also waiting for the results keep this in mind don't wait for the results and don't think that i will start my interview only after the uh, mains results are declared if i if i am successful in the mains i will start to, it is only the process of 20 to 25 minutes where i will answer some of the questions asked by the members i can come up out of the board room i can clear don't have that belief it is not a question and answer session try to be independent in your thoughts in your opinions in your expressions start practicing this approach from right now so all the best thank you very much